Thank you. That was a great session. It was really inspiring. It was coordinated by Sophie. Uh, Tina kicked off with some poetry, which I think really set the stage. She highlighted uh, what is at stake, the focus on forgotten people who are completely neglected by the state and allowed to die. But on the other hand, you don't really need vultures, you know, as terms of academics or policymakers swooping down, but instead, you know, dissecting these realities. So I think that really highlighted some of the tricky negotiations that need to be done between academics, activists, um, in co-producing these issues. So the common threads were, one is humility. It's really important to learn um, whose voice uh, ultimately is, is, is comes to the fore, whose quotes, and there, you know, academics can assert a lot of power, so it's very important to be vigilant about these things. It shouldn't just be a middle-class product or middle-class researchers having their say, but allowing communities to shape the final outcome. And of course, power relations here are really key in terms of monitoring them, negotiating them. Time is really important. We need the time to build relationships, but also um, projects have, are time bound, so it's very important to look in the long term. Can we continue this engagement even after the funding has run out? So in terms of the takeaways, what I really liked was the fact that this is not something we can be comfortable about. It is uncomfortable. And if we are uncomfortable about issues about class, power, gender, that's great, because then we can shift things and move things forward. It's important to be honest about what's possible or not, um, be reflexive, be aware of biases. But I think we can also not just kill ourselves all the time and be paralyzed. There are also positive lessons. The case of Kenya, for example, where there have been very, very fruitful relationships between academics, slum dwellers, as well as students, and the way students and their internships have really also created change. So in terms of the critical questions remaining, this is my take on things. I think the first thing would be, how can we decolonize the curriculum, for example, to make things responsive to local realities, be it in the UK or in Kenya, Global South. Um, also some positive lessons, for example, um, you know, slums are often cleared away, they're evicted, but there are ways in which the quality of life can be improved in these spaces. So what lessons can be learned more widely? Uh, the need to co-produce outputs and reports, make them more democratic, because even if this is co-produced research, eventually the researcher may end up doing it and the communities may not recognize what's in there. So how do we shift that process? So I think all this calls for a change in the way academics practice. So they beat the ethics, issues of time scale, the outputs, um, and finally, the way we practice. Great. Thank you.